Chapter 54 to 56. It was nighttime, as people formed a circle with Amon and Wiper in the middle. Many of the Scipian militia were also present looking at the battle about to start. Among them was a dark blue-haired man, seemingly of 18 years of age standing. He had slightly tanned skin and a stern face. He had a beard on his face, though he had no mustache. He was around six feet four inches tall and had a rather muscular body. He was called Rio, the son of Gon Fall, a guy who might have become the next god if Amon hadn't taken over. Though that's a distant thought, as among the eight children of Gon Fall, he was the one with the least chance to become the next god. Though unlike how one would expect them to have a sense of regret and grudge towards Amon, it wasn't quite the case for the sons of the previous god, as even though they had god's blood flowing through their veins, they were treated just the same as normal militias before, as their mothers were just harem members. Living like that for all their life, they were quite all right with what had happened four years ago. Anyhow, before leaving the Skypea two years ago, Amon had ordered to keep specific eyes on them, and they haven't acted too smart yet. So they were here, as a part of God's militia of Scipion side, still alive and kicking. Rio POV. I look ahead towards the ring where the two are standing. That boy, Amon, his name was, he defeated the Holy Father. Though I don't hate him at all. After listening to Ho Father. Yes, he told me to not add the Holy anymore. Anyway, after asking Father why he doesn't hate that boy, I was given a pretty good reason. And for a guy like me, who likes to think about things logically, I can't help but agree. If not for him, this tribe, who has been oppressed for 400 years, would have not only killed us militias, but even the innocent citizens of Skypea. By being able to hold them back from doing so, he has earned my respect long ago, as I hate people who abuse their power and mistreat the weak. Not that I'm some kind of hero, I won't feel much after killing some random people. I appreciate a weak person's will to try and flip the tables. If they'll give their all during a fight, but still fail, I wouldn't mind letting them go and maybe do them a small favor. Everyone has to start somewhere, don't we? Anyway, the battle is about to start, let's pay attention. Ha ha ha! Amon, today I will defeat you. Wiper shouted whilst pointing his finger at Amon. He was similar to his anime counterpart when he was 13, however. In this timeline, he was just a little more on the edge than that part. Amon just looked at him silently. He was on top of his head and even dared to call Amon by his name, where two years ago, he was still a pussy calling him Kemisama Kemisama. Amon decided to teach him a lesson before giving him a push in the power ladder. Hey, dumbass it's been years since I last beat your ass. It was wrong from my side it seems, Amon replied while stretching his arms. Thanks for reminding me that your stinky ass needs a wipe every now and then. Wiper's eyes grew. Shut up. I will beat you. Use those wings of yours. I will beat you at your full power. Wiper shouted and dashed towards Amon, who was 70 meters ahead of him. Take this, heavenly step. Hormonal teenagers these days. As Amon thought this, Wiper vanished from some people's sight, though most of them were still seeing him move. Going towards Amon's head, Wiper's leg smacked forward. Bam! But it was caught by Amon's hand as he grinned. Weakling. While Wiper's eyes grew in surprise, Amon launched his fist towards his abdomen. Bam! Gah! Spitting a mouthful of saliva, Wiper barely freed himself from Amon's grasp. Jumping a few steps back, Wiper was clutching his stomach. Ha! Huh. It seems I was underestimating you. He said as Amon raised his finger. Correction, you were not only underestimating me, but you were also overestimating yourself, Amon said as Wiper gritted his teeth. Amon was taller than him, and stronger too. They both trained for two years, then why was he still so weak? And he wasn't even using his wings. Ha ha! Wiper laughed away his frustration and grinned. We will see about that soon enough. Saying so, he again started to attack Amon. Fwoosh. Heavenly step, mad bull. Again, Wiper vanished from his spot, however this time, only a specific number of people were able to see him. They were expressing their surprise. While Amon smirked seeing this, it seems he wasn't just bragging. Now, his choice of giving him that won't be a waste at this rate. Inside this fight of speed, Amon was standing with his arms crossed, while his observation hockey was following his every step. 
He noticed how fast Wiper picked up his spear and was just jumping around the arena. It would have confused anyone else of his position, though not Amon. The next second, Wiper attacked Amon at his stomach with his spear, while Amon just took a sidestep. Fuck. Bam. Time passed as a few minutes later, Wiper was still at it with Amon remaining passive. Yawn. Amon yawned while taking a sidestep. This is getting boring Wiper, don't you? He grinned suddenly. Think so too. Bam. Amon's hand moved fast as the next second, Wiper faced a stop in his move and was presented before everyone's eyes. Thud. Cough fuck. Wiper coughed out blood as he was clutching his stomach, the place where Amon hit. A purple bruise was formed there, while Wiper's face distorted in pain. It hurts bad. Rule number one, Amon said as he crouched down. Speed is good. You can use the momentum to increase your attack's damage. However, let's not forget that might also apply to yourself. Amon said with a grin. If you face an enemy with good durability, then he can just punch randomly. And if one of those random punches hit you, you will be the one to receive most of the damage. Wiper stayed silent on the ground while clenching his face. I will. Keep that in mind. Though of course, he took his words in mind. Then I forfeit. Hey, Riki. Before he could finish his words, Amon called out as Riki jumped from the crowd. Throw me my bag, the smaller one. Amon said as he raised his hand, and the next second, the bag was flown in it. As everyone looked at him curiously, he started to open the bag after cutting many electrical wires around it that he used as protection. It took a while for him to finish, but finally, he took out a box. Using his wings, he inserted a feather in the keyhole and soon the box opened itself. Everyone looked at it, while some who recognized it had wide eyes. It was a devil fruit. Wiper POV. As I look at the orange devil fruit with flame markings on it, I can't help but get curious why he took it out. Does he want me to eat it? Before I could think more, he tossed the fruit to me as I barely caught it. H.A. Be careful. Don't throw away your devil fruit. My devil fruit? No, it's yours now. Eat it. Huh. What does he mean? Wait. Does he think I'm so weak that I need to eat a devil fruit to beat him? Fine. Then be it. Fuck you. Without thinking much, I aggressively took a bite of the fruit. Munch. Ugh. Shit tastes better than this. It was a foolish move to aggressively take a bite. If I get the chance to eat a second one, then I will prepare myself for if beefo, huh? Suddenly strange information started to pop up in my head. Wait, 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 wait. This is... Logia. The Lujaya. Calm down, calm down. Let's think this through. He gave me a Logia. Why? Does he not know about this being a Logia? That must be it. That's the Logia Maramara no me. Fuck he knows. Then why is it pity? General POV. While Wiper was going through his internal conflict and gritted his teeth in anger, Amon just waited for him to get used to the new feeling. The Shandians are aware of the devil fruit categories, as Amon gave them some books from the Blue Sea using knockout streams. People would surely be shocked after they learned Amon gave Wiper a Logia, more so one of the destructive elements, fire, the Maramara no Mi. The fruit consumed by port gas. Deace, then later Sabo in canon. It's a powerful fruit, even though it was defeated by magma, which it shouldn't have been. Amon took it from the island of Sixus in the East Blue. It was just laying on that lifeless island, so Amon took it for himself. Though this might change the timeline big time, and even the Paramount War, that would have helped Amon a lot in his plans might also not occur. But the fruit was too good for him to not take it. Besides, he left the Logia, Steam Steam Fruit, in the exact same place of Mara Mara. If the so-called will of the world, the voice that Roger heard is real, then things will still happen. Maybe Ace will be even stronger this time, as he won't be able to use much offensive attack using Steam Steam Fruit, and will be forced to learn other fighting techniques. Though that is if he eats it in the first place. Also, I'm here. I can shape things according to my preferences, too. For now, Amon ignored the thoughts and looked at Wiper. So, Wiper, how do you fee? Shut up. As expected, he's enraged. He must be thinking how I'm looking down at him and what not. Amon laughed internally. Fool, if I could eat unlimited fruits, 
I wouldn't have given such a destructive fruit to you. You think I would need a devil fruit to catch up to you. Moreover, a logia. He screamed. He didn't feel blessed with an intangible body as most people would. I don't want to fight with a cheat. I forfii ga. Before he could finish his line, he felt a punch at his stomach. Now, now, cuz. Do you think I will give you something like that without me having ways out? Amon asked with a grin while his fist was touching his skin. It took a full nine seconds for Wiper to get things straight. Amon wasn't wearing anything in his hands, and they also looked completely normal. He didn't know how, but Amon was able to hit him. Soon, a grin just like his appeared on his face. Hee <laughs> hee. If you want to do it this way, then why not? In an astonishing speed, Wiper swung his fist towards Amon's face. Take this. Amon's wings soared up. That day, the Scipion in the Angel Island saw fireworks from the upper yard. It was beautiful, yet scary, though it didn't take even 40 seconds for the firework to vanish. The cause? They didn't know. The only clue they had was a yell they heard. Although it should be impossible from this distance, they do remember hearing a scream coming from the Island of God, as well as seeing a purple beam of light. Six powers, Roquogan. Seraph the AI POV. Currently, I'm inside my mind space while playing the clip I got a few hours ago. Fire Fist. It was the clip of the fight that happened on the surface of the island. After processing the first clip that I captured from thousands of cameras underground, I finally got the finished clip I wanted and have been reviewing it for hours now. In the small clip of 39 seconds, the current master, Amon mostly stayed passive, while he attacked from the air with wind slashes and his feathers. Since Wiper was getting out of control with his new powers, he performed that strange attack as the last blow. Wiper should be in the infirmary now. It also seems he unlocked Hockey Ha. Huh? It's good for both of us, I guess. He also got the Flame Flame fruit, which is a very powerful fruit, at least among Logias. Though I expected him to have a Logia such as that for himself, or at least give it to his sister. But I guess he doesn't have enough knowledge in these things. He is a frog in the well after all. The thing that interests me most is the attack he defeated Wiper with. I never saw it before, and before leaving the sky I'm sure he didn't know the technique. So I can presume he learned it by himself, or someone taught him that in the Blue Sea. I'm curious what he did in the Blue Sea these two years. He has hockey, but that was pretty normal 800 years ago at the time of that war. Speaking of 800 years ago, I suddenly miss my masters, but they are already dead, so I can do nothing at this point. I glance at the coffin hidden deep inside the hall. That's the body of the king, the body that might get to see the light of the world one day again. After all, it's definitely possible to bring people from the afterlife, since something like the Revive Revive fruit exists Brooks fruit. If I can find a way to make a dead person eat it, then he will probably come back to life, right? However, I was forbidden from even trying to do so. They don't want to come back, they died honorably. Though I don't really know what the word honorable means. I think it's a good thing as even being human, they were satisfied with that small life. Sai, speaking of orders and duties, I suddenly remember that time. My queen ordered one last thing before she left to fight the world government to never return. I vividly remember her smile when she said those words and went to fight those monsters. Ugh, even though I refer to them as monsters, I don't know what they did other than that they killed people and were supposed to be dangerous. In fact, I don't even remember why I was ordered to wait for that guy. Master deleted all the data of that time within me. Why? Did I do something wrong back then? Did I betray them perhaps? Anyway, I can't let that Kidamon know about my ignorance. Foo. Speaking of him, since I'm not sure what she meant back then, I should use the kid for now and wait until Joy Boy arrives. My master didn't give me any point in working on my decision. I'm merely an artificial intelligence. How can I ever decide for myself? Then after meeting Joy Boy, should I choose him as my new master? Hmm. Maybe I should give fruit to him too. I don't know yet, I will wait. I will ask Joy Boy myself what I should do. He should probably know if my master is trusting him this much. ZZZZZMM. Suddenly, the door of the hall opened as the kid walked in. Calling him a kid, he looks like a grown-up teen now. Before anything can happen, 
I should use the information I was able to recover after the wiper. Lady Toki was sent. According to the small information of that so-called prophecy, Joy Boy will arrive around the time Lady Toki will arrive. Though I'm not sure what the around means, is it before her arrival or after? I decided to ignore these thoughts for now and looked ahead. Welcome home, master. As I say this, I notice his eyes grow for a split second and his mouth twitch. I can ascertain he just suppressed a smirk. Why? General POV. Oh, would you look at that? I can sense her emotions, or at least something close to the word emotion. Amon thought while suppressing his grin, but it's hardly recognizable. Like I can't even tell what she's feeling, just that she's feeling something. Damn bitch. A few more years, or maybe months, or maybe days, then I will see everything inside you. Amon shook his head and looked at a random camera. What's up, Slew Sarah? Did you miss me? He said while waving his hand. Though I don't know what the miss emotion feels like, it's good to see you back, master. Amon just walked forward silently and sat on the computer chair. Just a while ago, his fight with Wiper made him a little exhausted since he used Rokwogen, the technique where the user releases all their physical strength through a shockwave. This is only accessible by a person who has mastery over the other six powers. Amon ignored these thoughts and called out to Sarah. Sarah, prepare a hot bath. Amon said while resting his back on the comfy chair. Make the water around 110 degrees Celsius. All right. Soon, the hot spring came out and the water started to boil not soon after. By the way, the temperature will burn your skin. She said as Amon laughed. Just now, he almost got roasted by Wiper's fire. The Marimara's fire ability was too strong after all. As even Jinbei with his level of hockey lost his ground to Ace's fire. Though Amon did beat Wiper this time around, his fire did scratch him a little. It was enough to form a little burn mark, though he healed it using Saimai Kicken already since it was very small. I know, that's why I'm training my body, so that I can survive boiling water, haha. <laughs> what if someone locked me inside a water pool and started to boil me alive? Though the actual reason was different, he didn't mind using it for his advance to make the AI confused and curious. Why? After a few seconds past the AI lost to her curiosity, since his tone did contain hidden meaning in them. Why? Did something similar happen in the Blue Sea? Yes, it did happen. Your Lady Toki came to Wano and married a guy named Odin. He was killed by being boiled. Funny, isn't it? Amon said as he walked close to the smoking hot water. Owl hot. Taking a step back, Amon looked at a camera. It was very hard to obtain such information though, so be grateful. While the AI stayed silent, Amon glanced at the smoking water. This wasn't his first time, and he did train like this before. That's why he is confident enough to not die at 110 degrees Celsius boiling water. Do you have the proof of Lady Toki's arrival? The AI asked as Amon could sense something like curiosity hidden within. Nah, wait some more. What's the hurry? Chuckling internally, Amon answered as Seraph stayed silent. Anyway, ignore those useless thoughts. Wayno isn't vanishing. From the world, is it? Amon said and breathed hard. Now, let's see how hot my body can take. Drip. Starting from his toes, he slowly emerged in the water while his face remained straight. Foo. Time passed as Amon was resting inside the hot water, his body red, and him still acting as if nothing happened. Now I'm used to it. He said to himself and looked up. Girl, tell me what did you find from the devil fruit I left? Amon asked with his eyes closed. I didn't find much. Seraph replied instantly. Mostly because of its complex structure. Such a complex structure shouldn't be naturally possible. Amon perked up his ears. He did believe that devil fruits were made by humans of the past. Or if one had to think out of the box, maybe an advanced civilization from the future had sent the fruits to the past. According to my theory, it seems the devil fruit, in the initial part, was made by humans. However, at that time, I was on the moon so I don't have any knowledge. Amon said, Hmm. All right, explain more. What do you mean by initially? By that, I mean even though I did say it's not supposed to be natural, as of currently, it's not an unnatural thing either. Amon frowned slightly. For example, suppose a pregnant woman was injected with special medicine, 
which made the child inside her develop very long arms. After that, when the child is born, he will be an unnatural case with longer than normal arms. However, thousands of years later, when the long arm guy's descendants are born, if they are born with long arms, even if their parents were not, it won't be considered unnatural, at least not scientifically. Hmm. It took a few seconds for Amon to fully grasp her words as he nodded. So the devil fruit reincarnation made them a part of the natural force. Amon thought, or that's what I'm guessing. Among started to think on this, while the AI helped him shower with the robotic tentacles. Yawn. Soon Amon yawned. That's all you got about devil fruits? It's been two years. Amon said lightly, Don't talk like that. It was your fault for leaving only one devil fruit. Beep. Look here. The next moment, the screen of the computer played a video. Boom. In the clip, the claw claw fruit popped up while a laser type light was pointed at it. This happened only a few months after you left. Don't blame me. It's not like I can test on the remaining devil fruit since they turned normal. Amon just sighed. All right, I won't blame you. Increase the heat of the water. Boiling sound. A few days passed and things were going according to Amon. He was getting news from Douay now and then who was in Burka with a few other people. Nothing interesting happened so far, though it seems something will. The Archpriestess wants to meet Amon after learning of his arrival. She immediately wanted to come to Skypea again, though Amon informed her not to do so. This time, they will go there as respectable guests. On the blue seaside, Robin was getting lonely even though she was having conversations with Amon now and then. Though this didn't affect her work hour, and she was still doing things at the speed she usually does. She also got some pirate reaching her out to meet Amon, though she did reject them all. With his current popularity, it wasn't that strange that people were trying to make the bounty hunter into a criminal and have him under them. He also had a pretty good force under him. While small-time pirates were scared of the name Lucifer, even in the absence of the said person, the stronger ones were waiting to beat his ass. While the monster ones didn't give it much heed, except a few heed. Dragon, the revolutionary. Lucifer, huh? And those wings, he's a burkan. Well, maybe I should send someone in the sky soon. Monkey, D-Dragon, revolutionary army's interference. Don Quixote da Flamingo, generation's most famous bounty hunter. Kukuku, I should talk with him sometimes along the line. The heavenly demon said with a laugh. The Satan picked the attention of the heavenly demon. Dracul Myhawk. Wing sword style. Interesting. Been a long time since I felt like this. Let's see if he can live up to my expectations or not. Mumbled Hawkeye Myhawk while roaming the sea in his small boat. The world was aware of the small fry now, however. Would he still be a small fry the next time he comes out of the sky? Only time shall tell. Fifteen days later. Currently, Riki and Wiper were in the training ground that was made during the time Amon was in the Blue Sea. Slash. Both of them were fighting with a few people around watching the match. D. 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 With an angry and annoyed face, Riki was slashing her sword at Wiper, who was just standing there laughing. Ha ha ha. I'm invincible. Ha ha ha. None of the attacks hit him, so he was just standing with the spear in his hand. Though as he laughed, he recalled his internal injuries from Amon's attack last time. But, I guess I will fight fair and dodge attacks. Amon said there are many people who can use that thing called hockey dot. Wiper mumbled under his breath and evaded Riki's attack, while soon after, he attacked Riki using his spear. Clang. Ha. Huh. You are finally playing fair. However, his spear was stopped by Riki's sword. Swords to be specific. Shut up, I'm a fair man. A real warrior. Clang. Clang. They started to exchange blows with Wiper using his fire to heat his spear. Though unlike how people expected, the swords in contact with the heated spear didn't get sliced. Rather, they were on par with Wiper's techniques. Minutes passed as exhausted, Wiper jumped a few steps back. What the fuck? Why are you so good at using two swords? Aren't you using two swords for just a few months? He yelled with a frown. He was annoyed with the constant blocks from her. SDFU. 
Of course, I was preparing myself for these two swords after all. Riki said with a proud face, as she raised her hands holding the sword. Months ago, brother said he got two good babies for me, so I was preparing to wield both at once. After a short silence from both sides, Riki laughed maniacally. Wahaha! Ignore that, now die Wiper. Saying this, she dashed forward as Wiper was forced to use his fire powers. The two swords in her hand were Yubashiri, one of the fifty skillful grade swords and Sandai Kitetsu, one of the grade swords. These are the swords Zoro got in Logetown, albeit in the canon timeline. This time around, it was Amon who picked them up after doing the same drama show as Zoro to receive the NPC reward. Clang! Their fight escalated, while the audience was rendered speechless. Though it was clear Wiper will win because of his intangible body, yet the fight was a good one. Among the audience, one of Gone Fall's sons, Ryo, was also watching the fight with a slightly surprised face. So strong, he thought looking forward, and here I am, so weak. Thinking this with a feeling of inferiority in his heart, he looked down. Though he wasn't looked down upon even though he was the most worthless son of God, he always used to think optimistically. However, seeing people much younger than him like this, sigh, Rio released a long breath. I can't believe it, Maybe I should train both sword and spear if I want to catch up. Or maybe not. They are naturally strong. But I should at least train what I see, eh? Hey, Commander Rio. His thoughts were cut by the yell of a random militia. Rio, being one of the strong individuals from the Scipion side, was given the duty of the commander of the 16th group and had 13 militia under him. HM? What is it? Rio ignored the thoughts for now and looked at the soldier. Um... Isn't today the day when we will visit Burka? But I don't think Kamisama is here, the soldier said with a nervous expression. A large frown appeared on Ryo's face. Idiot, are you even doing your job right? Don't you know Lord God already left for Burka a week ago? Ryo declared as some people glanced over, while the soldier just nodded profusely. Es sorry, I was spending time with my wife. We recently got married, you see. Ryo just sighed. Also, only the commanders will go there along with the personal guards. You don't have to get hyperactive. Asterisk. Same time Burka. Outside the Grand Temple of Burka's God, many people were sitting around the two sides of the road in a line. They were waiting to receive the temple food that was supposed to be blessed by the thunder. Not that the Burkans were poor. It was just a tradition for them to take the temple food every day. Yes, this was said time, and the priests were the ones handing over the food to everyone. Among them, the three high priests Yurij, Enel, and a random woman were sitting above the tall stairs of the temple. Just around them, the archpriestess, Yona was also there. She had her eyes closed and was sitting in a lotus position. She looked as if she was sleeping, though she was indeed woke up and had her mantra open. As time passed and almost everyone received their food, Yona opened her eyes and started to look down, seemingly searching for someone. Enel noticed this from the side, as he moved his sight from her face that he's been staring at for a long time. Arch Priestess, it seems you have been looking for someone? He asked calmly, and the other high priests also looked at her. Is it that kid again? Um, I'm looking for him. The beggar who came here a week ago. He is late to receive the food again. Yona replied in a soft voice. I say he is suspicious. We should make him leave the island soon. The other woman meddled between and said with a sense of suspiciousness filled her voice. No, priest Tsumi, we don't do that here. Yona said and stood up. I think I spotted him. I will be back after granting him the food. Yona said and ignored the other priests, going towards a large tree far from here with a bowl of rice in her hand. There should always be two high priests close to the temple. After all, they don't want invaders, which are supposed to be zero with their mantra. This was one of the reasons why Amon left for the Blue CW years ago, since sneaking won't work at all, and would rather start an inevitable war, which would result in a defeat with his 130 Shandians versus 3,000 strong warriors. Yona POV. With a rice bowl in my hand, I slowly walked towards that tree hundreds of meters away. I don't know why I couldn't sense him before. It's almost as if he wasn't even there. Is it because I've been fasting for a month? Anyway, 
I will just ask him myself then. Thinking this, I slowly started to walk towards the guy in that shiny yet tattered black robe. Not long after, I reach him and look down at him. He was dozing, indicating his sleepy state. I don't know his identity, though I can tell he's a Scipion from the silhouette of wings under his robe. Hello, distant visitor. I'm here again with your food. I say lightly as he looked up. His lacerated lips make me feel a slight sense of pity. Oh, it's the red dragon princess. The man, or rather, the boy smiled towards me. I can't see his face except for his lips, though. Thank you for the food. Oh, I also got the technique you taught me. He calls me Red Dragon Princess for whatever reasons, though something trivial like that matters not to me. But what does he mean? I don't remember teaching him anything. Anyway, I sighed. Visitor, stop me if I'm being disrespectful for trying to pry on your privacy. But did you go somewhere? Just a while ago, I couldn't sense your presence at all. And then suddenly my mantra spotted you here. I make an apologetic face. If you don't mind, can you tell me where you went? As I say this, I can see his smile wide. I never left this place, actually. A frown appeared on my face. General POV. An involuntary frown appeared on Yona's face. She just sighed. I couldn't sense you. My mantra is the strongest in Burka. Her voice was a bit cold. A very unusual thing to happen. After all, if he's hiding where he went, he might have trespassed the temple and even went around God. Though he won't be able to take out God from the locker he was put in without the key, her sword, it was still an act which should get punished. Please answer my questions straight, she said, while the man just waved his hands innocently. No, no, I really was here. It's because of your own words why you weren't able to sense me. The man in robe said as Yona tried to actually recall what she said. Some days ago, he asked why he could hardly notice her presence, and her answer was simple. I was born like this. When asked to explain, she did it without any hesitation, since she did this many times before already. Living beings are like a candle flame with their will power, while the environment around them is the darkness enshrouding the candle. As long as one has will power, one would definitely be sensed by a mantra user. Though there is a way to stop that by turning off your will power. When I was born, I didn't really feel any desire towards anything. I did what others asked me off. That's the reason why people with mantra, who sense willpower, couldn't spot me. Though now I do have a desire, the desire to protect God, I've come to a spot where the presence hiding has become common for me. She had the potential to be a powerful assassin, unfortunately, she was a mere priest on an island of sky. I took your words at heart. I've been training in the ways of hermit for a long time after all. So I've been trying something very hard for the past week. The man said, and look, today I was able to do so like you did, albeit I can only hold it for more minutes. The man in robe said with a smile, he looked happy. Yona wasn't really convinced as nobody was able to do so like this, even after her explanation let alone achieve it in only a week. Can you do it right now? Yona asked, suspicious. I need proof. Her words were cut midway by a yell. Oh, Archpriestess, my people are here. It was the voice that both Yona and the man in robe recognized. It was Dewey's voice, hearing which Yona looked at him abruptly. Oh, really? Is your god here too? Her excitement was visible, which she also realized soon and coughed lightly. Ahem, sorry about that. She inspected the people standing behind Duway, Wiper, Riki, and many others. There were 25 gods' militia and five personal guards. She recognized Wiper and Riki from before. However, the person she was most excited about wasn't present here. Air, your god didn't come? Hearing her Duway scratched his head in embarrassment. Well, he is supposed to be already here, but I can't reach him. Instantly worried, Yona opened her mouth to say something though she couldn't because someone else did it from behind her. Soon may the mitten man come. From behind her, the cherry voice resounded. Oh, wait, no. The mitten is already here. Ha ha. Yona instantly looked back as her eyes grew up. The man in a robe was slowly taking off his robe, revealing his black hair and red eyes. But the thing that caught the attention of everyone around the place is what came from under the robe. Wings, massive beautiful wings. Yona didn't take a second to get things straight in her head. 
I, it's real. Yona yelled in disbelief at the sight before her. Amon just hummed while looking at her.